Hello and welcome back to Mr. Allred's 5 Minutes On. Today I'm going to be talking to you about the concept of costs. Um, quite a complex thing because there's lots of them and lots of different categorizations of them. Um, so hopefully we'll give you some information about that. This is a good G uh, video for GCSE, A-level and vocational courses because it's covered in everything. It will go slightly deeper than you will need for GCSE because I'll start talking about semi-variable costs and things like that. But hopefully it'll give you some context and some examples to use. Okay, so let's start with what costs are. What well, costs are things the business has to pay for. It's, it's revenue expenditure that it pays for and it's day-to-day -day running. It's not spending money on equipment or on buildings or on uh, fixtures and fittings or vehicles. These are capital expenditure items. We're really talking about, when we're talking about costs, the revenue expenditure items, okay? So when we look at costs, we can split them into two different types we can call them fixed costs and variable costs so let's start with our fixed costs and the name and the clue is in the name should i say fixed costs these costs do not change in relation to output so what's that mean do not change in relation to output in the short run well if we think about it they don't change by based on how much i make or i sell so if we look at this graph we can imagine a fixed cost would just be a straight line when we correlate it with output. As I sell more and more products, my rent doesn't change, my business rates doesn't change, the insurance doesn't change. It doesn't matter if I sell no products, one product, 10 products, the amount I'm paying monthly for those items does not change in relation to output. Now people go, well, rent does go up. It does, but it might not go up in relation to output. It goes up because my landlord wants to charge me more or inflation or other factors cause that to increase. And therefore, when we link it to output, it doesn't change. Variable costs, though, well, they vary. They change in relation to output. So as output goes up, so does variable costs. So we can see that as output increases, variable costs will increase. Now, if we think about this, there's lots and lots of examples of variable cost. Direct labor cost, if I can attribute labor costs directly to um, the production of a, a product, then that is a variable cost. Inventory or stock or raw materials or packaging. And if we think about somebody like Amazon, you know those oversized boxes that they send your stuff in, that's part of their um, variable cost because every time they buy, uh, that you buy a product from them and they send it out in the oversized box, they have to pay for a box and they have to replace that oversized box. And that adds to their variable cost and that increases with the more they sell. If they didn't sell any products, they wouldn't need any oversized boxes. Okay. Now, when we want to calculate our total cost, we use the formula at the top here. We use fixed cost plus total variable cost. So what's that mean, total variable cost? Well, that's because variable cost can be calculated in two ways. Either we can calculate it via the total variable cost, all of the variable cost, or by the unit variable cost. Now, what's that mean, unit variable cost? Well, that's the cost or the variable cost for one product. So this is how much variable costs are in one of the products that I'm producing or selling. If I want to work out the total variable cost, then I would take that unit variable cost figure and I times that by the output, and that will give me the total variable cost. Then I can use that within the formula. Often in exam questions, you'll be given perhaps the unit variable cost and asked to calculate the total cost, and you'll need to find out the output and times that out, or vice versa. You might have the total variable cost figure, but you might want the unit variable cost figure uh, for something like break even, which we'll come on to at a later stage, and therefore you have to divide that. Okay, so finally, often people might say, Well, hold on a minute, something like wages, you know, yes, I might be paid 40. 40 hours a week at, at, at 10 pounds an hour. However, what happens if I, I do overtime? Well, that's because it's got its own special sort of categorization. It doesn't fully fit in with the fixed cost and it doesn't fully fit in with the variable cost. Utilities are the same, you know, my factory might run on a thousand pounds worth of electricity a month, but actually towards Christmas, because I have to up the production level, I end up spending more electricity. And that, these are semi-variable costs because they contain both a fixed and a variable element. So my basic wage is the fixed, the fixed part. But if I was then to incur overtime, 
well, that becomes the variable part. So therefore we categorize these as a semi-variable cost. These are costs that you want to watch when asked to calculate the things like total cost because you might need to look at how it attributes within that business, within a case study. Is it directly linked to labor or is it just a fixed cost and how is that business treating it? And it will tell you that and give you hints to that within the case study. So this is Mr. Allred's five minutes on costs. Hopefully this has been useful. Um, please like the video, please share and please subscribe to the channel.